I've been battling unnecessarily hard to get SSH server working on Windows. That's a usually pretty trivial task with a Mac or a Linux machine, but with Windows, it seems to have been unnecessarily difficult. I think they've changed something in uh, Windows 10, 1807. Um, they've changed uh, the, the location of known uh, authorized keys, I believe. So um, if you get in the same problem, you've come to the right place. So the first step here is to set up uh, PowerShell or open it. You need to run it as administrator. That's very important. So let's just do a, a few different a few checks first. So we want to get the Windows capability. So you can see here that I have the client installed, but not the server. Uh, so we need to add the Windows capability. There are UI ways to do all of this, but I find the command line is actually the easiest way. I'll link the, the page that says all this information so we can just copy it from there afterwards. Okay, so that's installing the OpenSSH server into Windows. I believe the way to do it, if you're looking to do it manually, is you go through the control panel, um, you go into system and security, and you go into, I believe it's administrative tools, and then it's services. And you'll see there's an OpenSSH option here somewhere. Open SSH authentication agent. No, it's not that. Something along those lines. Anyway, we're doing the command line way today. So for you GUI freaks out there, go away. So now let's check that capabilities there. So now we have the server installed. That's great. Now I want to start the service. So start service SSHD. Okay. Now if we want it to start up automatically, we need to go uh, set service name SSHD startup type automatic. And let's just check the firewall as a because uh, we needed a, a firewall rule on uh, port 22. And we can see there should be inbound traffic somewhere here. Inbound rule for OpenSSH server. Good. Okay. Actually, the, the document here says to add the rule anyway, so let's go net new net firewall rule name shd display name open sh server shd enable true direction Inbound protocol TCP action allow local port 22. Let's check that rule again. And we've got this new rule up here, you can see. Okay, so the tricky part is I'm sure you could find that that on Google yourself. The tricky part I found was that if we go back to program data and the C drive, and we go into SSH, and if you look at SSHD config, if we go notepad SSHD config, it's this change right here at the bottom that's the problem for everyone. 
this line here. So match group administrators, uh, authorized key, blah, 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 blah. So it's actually pointing to a different authorized key file. So you'd probably be quite used to, if we just open up another terminal here quickly, you'd be quite used to uh, your authorized keys being in your home directory here. So if, we, okay, there's none. So it would normally be in here somewhere. But the this change here means that if you're a, a user, so that, that's an administrator, it now goes to this different file, which is actually residing within the program data slash SSH folder. So let's go ahead and make that file. And we need to go notepad. Uh, add actually let's just copy paste so it's going to be easier isn't it so we don't make any typos okay create a new file yes and now we need to put our key in into here so on your linux machine so you can see here i'm on uh, parallels let's open a new term here Okay, so I'm going to go SSH keygen. This is now on my Mac. It's going to ask me what I want to call it. I'm going to call it YouTube. Uh, no, I don't want to already override it, but YouTube tube tube. Now it. Okay, so now we want to cat YouTube. To tube. Yep. I really shouldn't have generated that there. Okay, we'll definitely never cut your, your public, your private key on, on YouTube, but that uh, key's going to be gone soon anyway. I don't know why I created this directory when I said it created it in the .ssh file, which it normally does. Okay, I guess because I overrode the default, and that's why I did that. And we want to copy that and go back to parallels. And then we want to paste that key in here. Uh, so there we go. And within the SSH underscore config file, we want to change a few things. So we need to change password authentication to no. We don't want to allow passwords. And we do want to allow pub key authentication, yes. So save that. Now, a very, very important step here is that we need to change the, the permissions on this file here. You can see it's actually been named to this. So I need to get rid of the dot text there as well. It's, a, it's an annoying thing about Notepad. So you gotta make sure that your key looks just like this. Okay. Now I need to change the permissions on this. So I've got a script over here that I've written myself. No, I've copied it from the internet, just kidding. Uh, so I'm gonna go notepad set auth permissions dot ps1. So that's a PowerShell script. So we set PowerShell scripts by going set execution policy remote signed, and then we go yes. Okay. Oh, I pulled this Notepad. So that's that's great. So within the script, we're going to paste this, which I will leave in the comments. Nope, yep, not that. Okay, so what it will do is get the access control list from that file. It'll set some protection rules on it. Basically, it'll set it in such a way that SSH permits it to, to be the authorized key file. So now we need to run that set authorized 
permission script. And then that should have changed the permissions. If we LS, we, we hopefully will see some changes in permissions. Uh, we did not. So great. Uh, a, a useful thing to do at this point would be to restart the SSH restart service SSHD because we've gone and changed the configurations it needs to reload them now hopefully we should be able to SSH into it so SSH minus I YouTube to tube so we need to use our private key here and what was the username let's go who am I Awesome business, yeah, could have guessed that one. Mousy business, oh god. And then my IP. And we're in. So, Main points there, just to recap, um, the change at the bottom of this file, the sshd config is what causes a lot of dramas now. It used to be that you could find your ssh key in the user home path. You'll notice I don't have any file in here and that ssh worked. That's because my user is an administrator, which looks within this directory and that file. And a very important part is setting the permissions on that file. I'll put all the, all the information in the comments below. Um, Good luck.